you ever dreamed of being squeezed between two Ethan's? <laughs> this is an Ethan sandwich. <laughs> Whoa. I can't say as I have. <laughs> well, you can mark that off your bucket list. Yes. Your dream is going to turn into a nightmare. <laughs> oh, we need to just introduce the podcast. Sorry. Okay. So, um, would you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, my name is Ethan. Um, what else should I say? That's good. Yeah, my, that's, my name is Ethan. My name is also Ethan. Yes. We're everywhere. Collectively, they are Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> so, um... Sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. It's right there. It's not open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... Right, we can we can do the pop on three now okay. if you guys want to. Okay. Does anyone else want to count down or do you want to like three, two, one, pop? Well, we pop on three, so it's one, one, two, three. One, two, three, pop. So pop is on four. One, so it's like one, two, three, <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> one, two. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I spilled some coke on your computer. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> you better be. Okay. So. ASMR, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, did anything interesting happen to you this week? Either of you. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nothing. Just I'm, I mean, I drove a long ways. Correct. Yeah, visiting from out of state. I'm a Texas boy myself. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's a it's quite a drive. To, hey, to Indiana, Ethan. It is. Which one? You. <laughs> the one with an S. Um. <laughs> I suppose we'll move on to questions. Yeah. Unless something happening, happened, happened, this, interesting to me this week. Does this podcast like have a general theme that happens every week? So or whenever it happens, what we just did yeah. was the theme basically. Oh, pop so into cokes. pop into cokes. Okay. Ask you if anything happened this week. Okay. And ask you to introduce yourselves, and yeah. then that's about it. Yeah. And then we burp a lot because we're drinking coke, and that's and about drove, it. And drove a lot. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Interesting. If money was no object, mm-hmm. would you get married in the States or have a destination wedding? Destination. Considering we're all looking forward to this in oh, the future, yeah, maybe. All of us are single. Yes. Well, who sent this question in? I don't know. <laughs> I want to know this. Was it another single person? Oh. Hopefully female. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, um... Who wants to answer first? I would say destination mm. and space. Whoa. Space. Zero gravity. Nice. If money, if money was no object. Space. Yes. Whoa. Zero gravity. Okay. Very nice. Can we have more details on that? Like, uh, Preferably in a, some sort of space station or space shuttle. Okay. So that way I'm not just floating around in the vacuum of space. Mm-hmm. Because that, as cool as it sounds, I don't think I'll last very long. But then, like, <laughs> yeah, just space. I'm, I like space and the idea of zero gravity. Mm. Yeah. And so, no matter what they said, it's if the, the question was, if money was no object and you had to have a funeral anywhere, <laughs> I would have said space. Oh, okay. Very nice. Would you proceed to have the honeymoon in space as well? Absolutely. I like it. Okay. That would be interesting i could throw some respect on that <laughs> for sure well wow. okay what about you jason um man i haven't really thought about this a lot um you know haven't been too close to that so <laughs> um what do you daydream about not location mm, that's fair <laughs> um you know 
like the coolest place I've ever seen, which I've already brought up on this podcast before, Mm -hmm. was like that place in Portugal with the like castle and caves and stuff. That would be a really cool place to have a wedding. Like really cool. So probably there if I could get there. Excuse me. It's all right. Um, hmm, if money was no object, where would I have a wedding? So this is like a scenario where I have a ton of money. Where you just have unlimited money. Unlimited money. You could pay somebody a billion dollars to make them could I still let do, you use it. Could I still it. do a backyard wedding? Sure. Because honestly, like, I would just rather do that anyways. I'd just spend a ton of money on the honeymoon. Right. I to- Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Like, yeah. I would just have my wedding. Like, if it was up to me, my wedding would be, like, hecka small. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of. Because I'm thinking, if, if money's no object, I have a backyard wedding with, like, maybe 20, 30 people. Mm-hmm. And then I use the rest of the money to, like, travel to multiple places. Right. Like I totally agree like with we that. We could go to, like, we could, like, hit up, like, Greece, Brazil, and, I don't know, Canada. Like, I'm just saying, like, this... I'm, Canada? I'm just saying, I just wanted to mention three different continents, just to say, like, that's the extent uh. of the travel. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Backyard wedding. For sure. Happening. I agree with that. Eileen Isaac's backyard wedding was dope. I was thinking of them as I was saying that. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, Next question. Oh, that is a really good question. Okay. I want to know who's, who sent that in. I'm going to guess my mom sent this in, but I don't really know because Eileen didn't tell me. So. Oh, okay. Have any points of biblical doctrine changed for you or developed over the past year shoot over the past year yeah in other words have you learned anything new from the scriptures in one year i have to think about who's going to be listening to this podcast (laughs) oh whoa (laughs) whoa Whoa. well it shouldn't matter if you just yeah are speaking the bible i'll just yeah i have to think for a minute do you guys have anything ready um over the past year well I don't have anything like fully changed Mm -hmm. just kind of better understanding of certain things and I'm still kind of between I'm not totally sure what I believe on this but one thing that I'm like looking into right now and I've changed my perspective on Mm -hmm. at least is like the baptism of the Holy Spirit that <sighs> biblically the way that people describe it right now doesn't really make any sense compared to how it's described in the scriptures I mean, and like so people being so here's what i believe okay. which i'm sure people can debate this and will debate this is just that like you're filled with the holy spirit when you get saved and then like baptism of the holy spirit is just like you know what we call baptism of the holy spirit where you like speak in tongues or something you know yeah experience one of the gifts manifest right there in action is just uh kind of like a moving of the holy ghost at that moment Mm -hmm. because i just don't see in the scripture anywhere where you know somebody gets saved and then they're like well have you been filled with the holy spirit yet because the only instance where we have that, they're, like, not actually saved. You know, when they're like, well, we listen to John the Baptist, and mm. uh, it's Peter talking to them, right? And he's like, I don't remember. he's just like, well, you shouldn't follow John the Baptist. You need to follow Jesus mm. and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, he's not saying, like, you were already following Jesus, but now you need the Holy Spirit. He's like, you need to get saved, you know. And part of that is the Holy Spirit. So that's just what I believe, and I know 
other people will debate that but that's something i didn't i just was like so confused by like i thought i was less saved because i didn't get filled with the holy spirit yet you know what i mean Mm -hmm. even though i you know before i did i have had large um you know i've spoken in tongues and things like that Mm -hmm. so i've had those things but before that time you know so that's just changed my perspective on it recently spicy yeah for me the the first thing that comes to mind is like in the past year is i was a young earth creationist oh but now i'm not so (laughs) i you probably don't know this i am I have taken a master class in creation apologetics. So we could we could get in a real deep discussion here if you want to. I mean, I've I've I grew up like I went to a Christian homeschool program that like they basically taught like like my younger brother's going through it and he sent me a video of of like the class saying it, but it's uh, it was like saying you cannot be a Christian and believe in evolution. Those things are mutually exclusive, and right, that's not true. And Obviously. I've, I've sort of come to see like the thought. Like I personally believe older, like older creationist. Like I, I obviously believe God set everything in motion, but I think it's such a like an unnecessary argument to have. Like. So many people are, are like, so many people cast aside Christianity or not be based off that. It, we could easily like get to heaven one day and God be like, oh, it, neither of you are right. It was actually this one be like, oh, like it, it doesn't matter. Like it's, right. it doesn't matter long term. Like it's definitely not it's, core doctrine. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Like, yeah, yeah it definitely doesn't matter for you being saved or, yeah. you know. But the argument that I say pretty, that is important with it, is that it's kind of a breaking down of believing every word of the Bible because it says how it was created and it says it, um, you know, it says it very clearly and in context of Genesis, that whole book is written in you know historical narrative not in you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. not in metaphors it's not a metaphorical book you know um so what the problem that most young earth creationists have is that uh if you are you know just changing your view on it because of what the world is saying about science and things like that is that you would just use it in any portion of the Bible to just, you know, as new things you learn and then you change the way you see it instead of just looking at it from a biblical sp- perspective only. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's the that, only argument I would have. But that whole the, it's not a hill to die on. Yeah, but the whole, like, the, the that argument you just said of, like, if you're changing one thing, it could lead to like changing other things like Mm -hmm. throughout the course of history creationism has only become popular in the past hundred years like even people like c.s lewis uh diedrich bonhoeffer um what's his name gk chesterton all were like adamant like it was just like yeah we like evolution what is a thing like right and they they could have they could have a look at Genesis and and believe both like that Genesis is true like I I do believe that the seven days is a not a literal seven days mm-hmm. but I mean that's chapter one of Genesis and I do I think that's told more poetry like that might not be the right word but I know what you're saying yeah. But I, I do believe in, like, the Garden of Eden and all that, but... So, like, one of one argument 
that could be valid, in my opinion, is that we don't really, it doesn't say very specifically how long the Garden of Eden lasts. Am I correct about that? But after that, we have very, very clear how old the earth is because there's genealogies for every single person. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, you know, and so basically as a large overview of it is just like the, um, there's two views you can have of the world Mm -hmm. is either young earth or old earth. And the only thing you need for it to be young earth is a flood (laughs) because it's, you know, it's such a massive catastrophic event. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just like things like carbon dating and radiometric dating and things like that are just utterly inconsistent completely. Like, um, if you look at radiometric dating and, you know, they can do it with different elements. So mm-hmm. you take one rock and they do the radiometric dating on four different elements a lot of times they are tens of millions of years different from each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a big inconsistent, (laughs) you know, that's like a large thing. Um, But as you said, like as far as it being a salvation issue, it's just not. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's not. (laughs) Gets like I, I, I find like, arguing about it just be pointless i love arguing like it's one of my favorite (laughs) things to do so like i could happily it's a good time mm -hmm. i could happily like sit down for like an hour and argue about it but then like at the end of it like i don't want to offend the person like right alienate them from belief like from what i'm saying based off like they're upset like like i got too personal so like right i think like like, I think it's just, like, one of the trivial things that, like I said, it should be one day we're up in heaven and yeah. we could be, like, so, God, which one wasn't he? be, like, actually, it was the <laughs> aliens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like what you said about, like, offense, though, because there's what there is a ton of scripture about, particularly in Paul's epistles. Yeah. There's a bunch about not dividing over small things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But, yeah, that's in there a lot. Yeah. Like, um... And actually says to, um, like, confront them about it, kick them out of the church if they don't stop stop bringing it up and arguing about it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, Do you have a biblical thing, perspective you've changed? Yeah. Whatever it Um, was. I don't know if it's necessarily a perspective change. I feel like I became more rounded on a thing, though. And that thing is the gospel. Oh. Like, Yeah. So I grew up, so I grew up in church, right? And uh, when somebody, the thing that people called the gospel is uh, Jesus died for your sins, uh, was resurrected, now you get to go to heaven. Then they were done. I, that, I don't know, there was like, there always seemed to be like a missing piece for me. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't actually um, become a, a fully devoted Christian. Like, I didn't actually give myself to the Lord until I heard the next piece that I'm about to say, which was, which is the part that Jesus is actually the king, like the king of the universe. Right. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's what gives his life, death, resurrection, ascension, power, any meaning at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, if that, if that one thing isn't true, the rest of it doesn't matter. <laughs> So for a while there, actually, for a couple of years there, um, I'm 26 now, so from, I guess, like 19 to, wow, to like 24, 25, I, uh, I kind of went from one extreme of like just the cross to like the other side of like, no, we just talk about him being king. <laughs> but you need both. Like, yep. um, I heard... I heard a guy, um, a pastor. Actually, I'll just, I'll just. Can we promote other podcasts here? Sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the Bridgetown 
church podcast. Um, I actually heard him talking recently about um, I'm trying to remember how he worded it. Huh. He he was he was emphasizing the kingship of Jesus, but he in 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 um, context of his sacrifice, he kind of said that like if all you have is a king but not a sacrificial king that's a god that you can't really trust because that's a god that hasn't uh, experienced what you experienced like like read the book of hebrews like the <laughs> the whole reason that he was a perfect sacrifice is because he experienced everything that we experienced um so yeah so uh, i wouldn't say i like changed doctrine but i think i became more rounded because I went, I went from one extreme to the other, and then I feel like I'm like in the middle now. Like, good. <laughs> I'm like, you kind of, you need both of those things to express the gospel. Like, Jesus is the the sacrificial king. Like, mm-hmm. both of those must be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and then I think about Paul. He there was a place where he said, like, I've decided to do nothing but Christ and Him crucified, and Christ. Messiah, the anointed one, who gets anointed, priests and kings. Mm-hmm. So basically, what he's saying there is, I've decided to know nothing but the king and him crucified. In one sentence, he has both of those elements. And yeah. So again, mm-hmm. not really a doctrine change, but the last year I kind of reined it in a little bit. Cool. Yeah. Great. While we're still on this train, I thought we were in a room. <laughs> While we're in this train car going to the gas chambers, um, <laughs> um, about to get canceled here. Um, <laughs> I just, this is just something I've been thinking through and I've come to a conclusion, but I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, it's not exactly something I can back up biblically so i just kind of had to work it out in my own head yeah reasonably is okay. this the next question or is it just jason? no i'm it's just jason oh, yeah okay, okay. okay so um i'm calling it the um the conscience of purchase clause i don't know so this <laughs> here's sounds above my pay grade <laughs> here's my th- thought okay so I was just struggling with things like buy if you buy something and it it's financially supporting something that you do not support. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, like, if that is wrong to do, you know what I'm saying? Like you buy a product, then you hear that, that company supports an immoral thing. Correct. Like, do you still buy the product? Correct. Hmm. So. So. What's the question? I, w- I was just curious on your thoughts on that. I mean, I can give mine first if you want to, because I've already thought it through. So that kind of yeah. So this is where I've rested on this. Mm-hmm. Is that because the only way to keep sane is to, from this perspective, in my opinion, because I was just at a point where I'm like, I can't buy anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So is just that whatever product you are purchasing Mm -hmm. that's where the moral decision is and Mm -hmm. beyond that it's their decision and their problem you aren't necessarily feeding it if you're getting the product you want does that make sense so if a anyone came up to my house and offered to mow my lawn and they mowed my lawn, and I paid them to mow my lawn, and then they go murder somebody. I didn't feed into it. They just, yeah, you're not, you know what I'm saying? Not an accessory to, to the right. Yeah. It's their decision if they wanted to. Does that make sense? So, counterpoint, just like I, like I said a minute ago, I like arguing. Mm-hmm. And what if you know they're someone who does horrible things? Would you still? Hire them to, like you. You know you've seen what they've done. It's like public knowledge. The things they've done, and you. When they ask, "Hey, can I mow your lawn for five dollars?" Would you still 
does that say does it still apply right right so what i would say is that actually lessens the value of your product you see what i'm saying like they're bringing their market value down by doing that does that make sense Mm -hmm. but if they're like the very best lawnmower in the business and they're still doing it for a cheaper price i might still use them but i might you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. because their character is a part of their product value Mm -hmm. so that's what i would say to that Hmm. i know it's just something i was like Mm. i'll just ask him that's something i've thought about a lot recently actually because like once you look into the companies that like use like fight laws to keep a being able to use child slavery and to harvest their cocoa beans or whatever or to make clothes in a sweatshop like once you know like it's hard not to look at every label on something and like i don't want to buy nestle because nestle uses child slave labor right right or i don't want to buy from this clothes brand because they use sweatshops and not a sponsor (laughs) (laughs) i hope you never plan on being sponsored by nestle (laughs) but that's something i'm currently like i i i don't buy things from certain companies and like if there's something I like, I will consciously not look like. I'm like, I can just feign it. I can just be ignorant right. and go along and then hope I don't figure out. Like, Right. That's almost where I was at with it, too, where it's just like, I don't want to buy anything or do anything, listen to anyone's music, want to, yeah. you know, just like. But I think everyone, if you think about it, is going to do something you don't agree with. Yeah. So, like, you know. Obviously, someone like Planned Parenthood, uh, I'm not big on them killing babies. Yeah. <laughs> but if you go buy a condom from Planned Parenthood, I'm not... Go for yeah. it, in my what's, opinion. What's you know condom? what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to teach you right now? <laughs> no, oh, wow. Let's explain it quickly. No. I I'm think... I'm going to leave for this. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if my answer is a little bit... I'm not sure if it's different, but I think... I kind of, I'll, I'll kind of put some clarification on my last answer too, because um, I feel like I left something out of my last answer that's kind of key, and it kind of also speaks into this a little bit. Um, so going off of like my last thing about the gospel, um, a key thing that I totally left out was how it used to be for me just about what I get, like I get to go to heaven, mm-hmm. and now it's more about what I can do for God and bring right. and bringing heaven to earth like right. Jesus prayed. So segue into this question. <laughs> um, I kind of think about it as like, there, there are loads of things that I can't control. Like you were saying, like if I give a guy 10 bucks and then he goes and buys a pistol and then shoots a guy in the face, like I couldn't control that he shot the guy in the face. Right. I just gave a guy 10 bucks. Um, Cause pistols cost 10 bucks, you know? Right, um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I I just kind of I kind of with you on like, I can. I can only control a certain number of things. Um, I might put a little bit of thought into where that, where where my resource could then go later. Um. But there's just so many variables. Right. Like, I mean, what if you buy something from someone and they are supporting yeah. something that supports something else that you yeah. know like how far then, are you going to go yeah, with it but then on the other side say like somebody comes to me and they're like hey if you give me ten dollars then this orphan will have shoes like then then i think right. about okay what can i what do i have what can i do in this moment to make a positive impact right I, right i i think i think more like that when it's to make a positive impact when i think about negative impact there's i can't control what other people do yeah like, i like that yeah I don't know. That's, that's a cool perspective. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Ooh, I've got something else that just popped in my brain, but I'm going to save it for later because okay. we're going a little too far down mm-hmm. the rabbit hole. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll try to come out of it for a minute, and then I'll go back in. Okay. Okay. 
I have no idea who asked that question because the way it's worded is so strange. Okay. I don't know if I want to ask that yet. Let's let's yeah, let's go to a sillier one. Did Jesus did Jesus have a belly button? Yes. I think yeah. certainly. Yes, yeah. he was born just like we were born. Yeah. So that's pretty easy. Well, not According like I was well, born in a cave. Yeah, that's like, fair. That's fair. <laughs> not just like like I mean he became human. Yeah. Right. That implies he has a belly button. According yeah, to the book he, of Hebrews, he had a very similar experience to us. Right. So he was that means he has a belly button. He still came out of a person. So <laughs> But was it an Audi or an Innie? That's what I was just about to ask. Right. <laughs> I think he had an Audi. Just because you wanted him to be different. Yeah. Yeah. His 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 righteousness was so great that his belly button couldn't contain it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, I would I would like to kind of move into something slightly more uh, lighthearted and okay, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe more finite. <laughs> um, <laughs> finite. Yes, meaning like not abstract ideas. Oh, okay, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, like cats or dogs type thing. Right. Oh, right. Right. Gotcha. Um. So, for example, I'm just going to talk about tomorrow I'm doing comedy, stand-up comedy for the first time, which I think I already told you that, actually, but you probably forgot. She didn't know that. Yeah. I listen, I promise. Uh, <laughs> Ethan is pretty good at forgetting things pretty quickly, though, because I, I know I've told you stuff before, and you'll just be like, and then you just like ask me the next day, and I'll be like, well, <laughs> I'll just tell you again. It's probably It's probably just like certain things you don't listen to at all but you still respond cuz like when you do i don't wow. think you forget things you know what i'm saying yeah. i think it's just certain things you just That's, uh, your thoughts are somewhere listening else listening is very important to me i kind of hurt right now <laughs> this is painful it's good sorry it's, it's good feedback but yeah it's, wow. i i definitely have had that experience with you more than once i Whoa. think yeah <laughs> wow. um so i'm kind of nervous about it okay because i've never done stand-up comedy before mm -hmm. and i put i decided to do it on monday and i'm doing it on saturday so i had one week to prepare and i have like a bunch of background tracks for it and stuff that i had to mm -hmm. record and i just i went all out so that's gonna be wild so i'm nervous about that what what, what topics are you covering like your mama jokes um, so I'm basically just ripping off Bo Burnham the whole time. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to have an intro that's kind of like in fantasy land. Mm -hmm. I don't want to totally give it away cause you're going to be there. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, we're going to kind of start off in fantasy land. There's going to be unicorns and stuff like that. It's going to be fun. And then I'm just going to tell some like standard dumb punchline jokes that are just like cheesy doubles and um then i'm going to segue into musical comedy so i'm going to play a song a very short song and then i'm going to perform a full length song and depending on how people are feeling, like if people are like, okay, I kind of want this to be over, then I'll just move on. But if not, I have another full-length song that I'll do if people are like really digging it, but I don't know. I just have no idea what people are going to feel like. Then I'm going to do... I'll bring my tomatoes. <laughs> yes, please do. And then I'll do some poetry, mm. com comedic poetry. And um, then I will finish with another, like, fantasy type thing. I'm a, It's actually going to be a conversation with God. So it's hmm. going to be very, it's Whoa. pretty cool. Like a spoken word type thing? Yeah, so, so like I said, I have these pre-recorded tracks. So hmm. God will be speaking hmm. to me through the speakers, and then I'll be responding, Whoa. you know. Hmm. And he'll be responding to me and vice versa. But, the, like, the the final skit with God... That's completely original. I wrote all of it. But it's only like a minute and 30 seconds, so it's not super long. 
but the original one is like ripped off Bo Burnham, but I, it's like half original, half Bo Burnham stuff that I just ripped off and kind of pieced together in there. Mm-hmm. And it's like three and a half minutes. So it's pretty long. <laughs> so overall, it's going to be like a 20 minute show, depending on if the, if the other full length song happens or not. Yeah. Then so it'll be like 15. So if you're in Mount Vernon, Indiana, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> this was probably before this is even released. Right. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this, if at the very best, this is releasing, yeah, I'm not going to release this in tonight. Okay. I don't have time yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so yeah, it'll yeah, probably yeah. be a week from now. Okay. I mean, a week from when I did my comedy is when this will release. So, yeah. It will have been a week. In that case, I'll compliment you in advance. You did great. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm I'm going to record it, too. And so I might put it on YouTube if I don't get copyright strike too hard for ripping up a burn. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just I'm going to call the title that, too. Yeah. I'm just going to call it Me Ripping Off Bo Burnham for 20 Minutes. Mm-hmm. That will be the title if Is I put it on YouTube. Is that positive advertisement for him? Yes. Oh. I think it depends on how well you do. Well, <laughs> that's true. I, I'm i pretty confident. I'm, I'm honestly pretty confident. Even though I only had a week to prepare, I think it's good. I think I did a good job on preparing it. So okay. just... so, what, so what's the question there that we can answer? <laughs> I don't know. I was just speaking. Anything you guys are nervous about coming up in your near future? Um, hmm. How serious do you want to get? Yeah. <laughs> as serious as you want. No, nothing that I want to tell people that are going to listen to this podcast. Shout out to the manly men. Uh-huh. <laughs> they know. Okay. Ethan? Ethan? No. Okay. I'm not, I was going to say something, but then just decided hmm. not to put out in the public. <laughs> yeah. It's important to filter. It's important. I would like to get a tetanus shot soon. I got it. I got That's my last scary. one when I was fifteen, I'm, and they last for ten years, and I'm twenty six now. Ooh. So I'm a little scared of rust right now. I it's mean, actually it's, not rust. It's not rust. It is not. It is actually animal feces. But they <laughs> they used I've, to think it was rust because it would usually come from rusty nails and stuff. But it's just the dirt. That the rusty I nails would been come out of. Avoiding animal feces yeah. at all. Yep. I've so. been eating rusty nails and spoons. This yes. Whole time. This entire oh. time. Huh. I'm, I still want to get a tennis shot. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just the animal feces getting pushed up into your bloodstream by the rusty things. Oh wow. That does it. Yeah. I shouldn't have been slitting my wrist and shoving dog crap in there. That explains my medical problems. That's why you have lockjaw. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah. I got my last tetanus shot a while ago. I stepped on a screw in a ditch, oh. and it went all the way through my foot pretty wow. much. It didn't come out the top, but it was, like, that far from coming out the top. And I could not touch my foot to the ground for, like, a week. Hmm. That was a fun story. That's <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> Oof. I give I'm, that a 4 out of 10. That one, 4 <laughs> out of 10. I'll take it. That's about what my comedy is going to be like during the short punchline part. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this might some advice. The world's best comedian, in my opinion, Norm MacDonald. So oh, yeah. The best joke is one where the punchline matches the setup. Like... Um, well, I have kind of... So, I'm not totally sure what you mean. Maybe. I can't remember the example. The example like, a couple of the things he did, but... Uh, there was several that... Uh, whenever he was on SNL that he did, that was like... Man, I'm blanking. I, I, I had it in my mind, but then I forgot. I apologize. So, let me see if this... So, I have a joke like that. Perhaps this is what you're referencing. Sorry if I'm ruining this joke for you in the future. I'll but tomorrow too. 
Okay, so I basically... Mean, I mean, I'll laugh last week. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you did laugh last week. So, that was hilarious. So, in, like, the fantasy stuff, in the beginning of it, it says, like, there's a lot of convoluted similes in here, and it says... And so then it's... I'm saying it, it's me, but it's the speaker voice of me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, this is one of those convoluted similes I was talking about. Like an old man that had a heart attack and died. The crocodile had a heart attack and died. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> uh, is that what you meant? Like, it's, uh, I wasn't sure. Kind of. Like, the, what I'm thinking of, I don't remember the exact thing, but it's like... And then right after that comes a long convoluted simile. But it, you know, this was pretty... Sorry, go ahead. But, uh... <laughs> it was, like, on Weekend Update, he's like, in other news, these two celebrities did something, and he goes, you know what that means? It's just, these two celebrities did whatever. Right. I can't remember. Yeah. It's, it's I, After I leave tonight, I am going to watch it, look it up, and rewatch all of his SNL uh, weekend update so I can remember it. Cool, cool. I really haven't listened to Norm MacDonald that much. Um, really haven't listened to comedians that much, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Norm MacDonald is just one of the, like, he's my favorite. I only found out about him, like, i seen him on stuff, but I didn't know, like, the extent of it until after yeah. he died yeah then like me too i'd seen people post about it and this other comedian i follow did like a tribute to him and and so i'm like this is actually like really funny and so i went and i like binge all of his stuff and now i've listened to his autobiography which is more fictional than non-fiction <laughs> really but interesting like i think he, if i remember correctly he dies in it <laughs> but then mm. he comes back and like is that's a really good idea like so he just wrote an autobiography and just all of it was bs basically essentially like like, he just made up his own life that's really cool i love that like he he said that like part of it was he started ripping on ghost writers like whenever uh whenever celebrities hire ghost writers to do it and then like in the middle of the i was listening to the audiobook in the middle of it, it like cuts and goes, this is the ghost writer that Norm MacDonald hired. And I just want to say he was completely wrong about this. <laughs> and then it like cuts back to Norm MacDonald narrating it. And so it's like one of the most unique, I, I listened to close to 300 books in 2021, but that one was the most unique and like most original I, I've listened to yet. Awesome. That's cool. I like that. Yes. Oh, right. We should go on to our <laughs> other questions. Do we have another question? Yeah, we have another question, and then I was going to bring up my weird thing. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not that weird, it's, but it might Listen, be weird. I know I don't we know. are in a room with the door closed. It can't be, don't be too weird. <laughs> it, it won't be uncomfortable. It'll just be like, why are you doing this? Oh, okay, okay. Um... My kind of story. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of an odd question, but okay. My favorite ones. Did Jesus like the giant people, and or how did they get there? Which did he, did I don't like them. Yeah, I don't. Yes. And also the giant people. What is the giant? I'm assuming they're talking about Nephilim, and if that's the case, I guess he doesn't I feel like, like them. Like the same, the same way that you don't. That like. It's mean to call a short person a midget. Like, I, I feel mean to Jesus like the giant people. Right. Well, if they're actually people, yeah. of course. <laughs> but I think they're talking about Nephilim, which is... Yeah, do you I know... Mean, are you read yeah, up on I that feel, kind I of stuff? Like, I feel like we, we, we shouldn't go down that yeah, trail. Yeah, um, that's probably intelligent. But Not exactly yeah, I mean, with this podcast. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, okay. Um, here's my Bible math real quick. Okay. Um, God made everything. John one says nothing was made that was made without Jesus. Like like everything was made through him. Right. He uh, he made everything good to start out. 
right he, he loves the whole world so yes he, god loves jesus loves same thing loves the uh the giant people right any anything with people after it you've, for sure you've been bibled <laughs> that was the closing of the Bible. Like. Yes. I was confused. Like, did you just open up a can of whoop Bible? Yeah. There's there's a ton of different tangents that you could go from there. Yeah. But but yes, simple. Simply put, Jesus loves the tall people. For the sure. Giant people. But it says and or how did they get there? Jesus created them. Yeah. Unless we're going down the other path, but we're not going to do that right yeah. now. If you just want to say, in the beginning God created, boom. <laughs> okay all right so we don't have any more questions here so i'm gonna get into my other thing sorry mm. for my weird thoughts um you have nothing to apologize for so this is one of those things that i've been trying to think through but i have not come to a conclusion yet so maybe yes. you guys can help me with this it is i don't know it's just it's kind of a weird concept but mm -hmm. hear me out. I'm just trying to figure out what is the value of bad things. So, so hear me out. For example, like a, a large majority of like the greatest people in the world people that you look up to are people that have had terrible tragedies happen to them and they got through them you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so if the world had no tragedy so this is kind of the concept that I feel like is true in my brain but might not be true at all but it is, is that it's almost like it all kind of washes out to even. Does that make sense? So this is like somebody like me <laughs> who's had very, very little trauma and has lived a very comfortable life in America with a lot of money. And then there's like... Careful. <laughs> when I say a lot of money, I mean compared to the rest of the world. Comparatively speaking, yeah. Right, not compared to other Americans, but compared to the rest of the world and throughout history right um and then there could be someone in africa who had a terrible childhood and has no money and they're like really happy people and then, you know what i'm saying and they actually are like they've persevered through more they feel you know you know what i'm trying to say yeah yeah so i you know it's kind of a intangible yeah. concept but i yeah think you get what i'm getting at i think are, perhaps are you my, my my thought and i don't i'm not sure if this is what you're saying my thought is that pain gives comfort more meaning like correct loss gives gain more meaning for like like if your, if right. your heart was crushed the next time you fall in love is more powerful right like that kind of thing Correct. If, you, if you've lived on the streets, the next time you can pay for your food comfortably, it means more. Right. That I mean, that's certainly a part of it. But I'm also getting at, like, what what should we strive for? How how far should we strive for there to be no tragedy? Because if there was no tragedy, would it actually be better? Do you get? I know that's like. Mm, whoa a little psycho but <laughs> you know you yeah. get what i'm trying to we should yeah. get to we sh i think we should cause as much tragedy as possible <laughs> so that way more people can rise above it whoa we can <laughs> you just inspired it we can be creating <laughs> superheroes whoa if we just stand outside they alleyways just... and kill parents in front of their kids we could be creating <laughs> they just man. need a villain so they realize that they're a hero Maybe maybe Joe Chill knew what he was doing <laughs> Whoa. when he killed Thomas and Martha Wayne. Whoa. I feel like this isn't the direction that Jason's trying to go. 
<laughs> but it is a valid counterpoint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not a valid counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm saying ironically, like, yeah. like you're showing the irony of my statements, kind of. By yeah. What you were saying. I think I would answer this kind of in a way similar to what I was saying to the question earlier about buying products that from companies that support negative things like we could go out and try to stop every bad thing from happening um but then i feel like i have to be careful because if you word this a certain way it makes you sound like yeah. a buddhist <laughs> <laughs> like like i'm not saying evil is necessary i'm just saying evil exists right. like we live in a fallen world it just is there yeah um and I think that if we focus, man, how do I say that? Like, I, why you think, um, yeah, I think we should try and minimize suffering as much as possible, but no matter what, we still live in a fallen world. Bad is still going to happen. We can do everything and we should do everything we can to minimize bad things from happening. And if, there, but if there was theoretically a utopia, then people, or then, uh, then good would still exist. But, uh, but that's not gonna happen, and so, right, people can overcome things and become uh, stronger, and then use that to try and change things in the future but uh no matter this can get real depressing real fast no matter what we do <laughs> there's still going to be tragedy there's yeah. still going to be yeah. children you, dying you there's still be people starving yeah you can never strive for utopia on earth that's yeah. a terrible philosophy because it'll never happen and it's just kind of unrealistic so if you think yeah. ooh we're going to have a utopia then all the evil will just take over as soon as you know what i'm saying like it'll yeah. never get there that'd be quite arrogant to yeah, think that I you think... could run the world perfectly without getting killed <laughs> yeah i mean i think and we can just bring it back to the gospel again like the whole like the story of the bible things were perfect and then they weren't <laughs> and then yeah. and then and then god made a plan to reconcile the whole world back to himself through christ like, and I think, I don't, yeah, we do have that hope, at least if you're a Christian, we have that hope that one day there will be no suffering. But until then, um, there is suffering, and we, like, right, until I think, God picks the weed yeah, out, yeah, and um, I think it's never going to be kind like of that. What yeah. I was saying earlier, like, because there's suffering, when we have something that's good, it's, it's better in contrast and don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying God's plan all along was for us to, to fall so that we could then be reconciled. Maybe it was, I'm not saying that for sure. Well, like you were saying earlier, like good things feel better after you, yeah, but like, you know, like, like, like after the book yeah. of revelation happens and we're all around God's throne together, a part of the reason that that's going to be sweet is because we will remember what it was before. Right. Almost say God took us from that. Mm -hmm. And I, th I don't know if I don't know if that was more theological than you were looking for. No, that's great. It's great. Um. Yeah, theology is great. Um. I agree. Something I else. Kind of sarcastic. Like, yeah, theology is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um. This is kind of a, just another concept that, is not publicly backed up. But like in heaven, I think we're still going to have challenge. Mm. Otherwise, kind of like, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what those challenges are going to be like, but they're going to be perfect, so it's not going to be like yeah. stress and anxiety. But like, I think we'll still be accomplishing things. Well, but even you know, when things were perfect in the garden, they still were commanded to do stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways. Exactly. You've been Bibled. <laughs> 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 Um, I thought you had something to say, so I looked at you. I did, but then my brain went like, I was like, oh, that's a pretty tree. Like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Unicorns, silver trees, 
stuff like that. Yeah. For the record, I'm not Buddhist. <laughs> I don't think evil is necessary. It just exists. Right. <laughs> um, we can make the most of it, have as much fun as possible. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forget Romans 6. <laughs> sin. Yee! <laughs> Um, if we don't sin, Jesus died for nothing. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't forget Romans 6. <laughs> go, go read it. Hey, man. <laughs> You've been Bibled. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, here's an... Sorry. I I was like, let's get more finite. I'm out here throwing out wild concepts. Yeah. Um, another concept is that I've... You know, people always ask, what is... Why? Would, how could God exist with all the suffering in the world and all that? Of course, yeah. there's like multiple pretty easy answers to that question. But this is just a concept that I think suffering actually is more of a proof of God than it is a mm. argument against God. Um, because, like, without God, there would be no base for a sense of conviction. For morality does that so if you if god didn't exist then why would you care yeah they're getting into like made in his image stuff yeah and you know our conscience which is god <laughs> you know the knowledge of god every man has the knowledge yeah. that knows that he exists you know for sure that's always a interesting argument um yeah. when you are witnessing is just that you know that everyone knows that God exists. Mm-hmm. You like, know, like, like you in, know that. They're deep down heart of hearts. Yeah, every, it says it in the Bible, so yeah. you know it. Yeah. So you can always be like, I know you know he exists, but... <laughs> yeah. And it, it really gets to people because everyone really does. You know what I mean? I haven't tried that one yet. I might, you should try I might it. go for it. You yeah. should go for it. That reminds me of an experiment I read about where people were... They, like, separated, they put something across someone's face to, like, divide their left from right side, and then they, like, covered up one eye, and they asked them a question and had them write something, and so, like, they would ask people, like, do you believe in God? And they would say no, but then write yes unconsciously, <laughs> and, and other stuff like that, like, they, it was... I'm trying to remember the book I was listening the book it was talked about in but it was a really interesting like concept of like even when people were adamant that like I don't believe in God, a small part of their subconscious still like Right was like, Well, maybe. Right. And the most prolific atheist like Richard Dawkins Sam Smith? No, I think that's a singer. <laughs> Sam Harris. There you go. Like, they've had to go to like extreme lengths to continue being an atheist. Like, one of them has even said, like, when looking at the science, they're like, okay, there is proof. There is like you, science points to a creator. So instead of saying it's God, they're like maybe with aliens. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, I I always say that, um, not going to get to you here, <laughs> that, like, evolution and other things like that, or thinking that aliens came, take just as much faith or more faith than just believing God created it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Of course, you're saying theistic evolution, so you're still believing God created it. But I'm saying yeah, I think- not uh, Big Bang Theory or things like that mm-hmm. take more faith to, not faith, faith, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, belief in the non no evidence for it you know there's a lot more evidence for god than there is for a big bang you know yeah so to call us men of faith is like you got a lot of faith in nothing you know <laughs> it takes faith to believe in that too yeah you know? no matter what you have to like there's always going to be an unknown that you're going to have to fill on your mind and be like this is what i believe I don't have exact evidence for it. Like, there's no writing on a wall hidden, like, 10,000 feet underground saying Jesus was here, but... That we, that we know of. That we know of. We haven't discovered it yet. 
but I'm digging my backyard, and maybe I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Don't tell my landlord. <laughs> hey, I may have just got another question. How long is this It's episode? not. It's not. It's right about an hour, oh, so okay. we're just perfect. Yeah. Alrighty. Oh, the number I was looking at was not the time. Yeah, no, no. Okay. It's the meter. Yeah. All right, well... I think that is a wrap. Well, a chick- thank you. A chicken wrap. That sounds good. Or a Christmas present, mm. something oh. like that. Or M and M wrap. Oh man. All right. Is there a certain way that you end these things? Um. See, I used to knock over the camera, and then I stopped doing that. So I don't know. Mm. Not really. Mm. Uh, it just kind of ends. Can I just chuck this at the phone? What's your phone? It's Ethan's phone. He's got an otter box that can take it. Nice. (laughs) Podcast out.